So today, let's continue our discussion with illusion. And when I use the phrase illusion, I'm talking about anything that isn't as it appears to be or something that appears to be when it isn't. And of course, under all of this is the illusion of thinking, what has most old school been called Maya. And uh, I have been giving all these different examples because what I found from teaching, particularly in my mindfulness course over the years, is that everyone connects in a different way. And so the more examples you use, the more likelihood someone will connect with one of the examples. And today I'm going to talk about averages. <clears throat> Because we are surrounded by means and averages, and uh, whether it's the average IQ or the average uh, income or height or weight. And, and science itself has constructed this average body. And if someone says, look, you have too little serotonin, well, that's because they're comparing it to the average. And if you do an experiment, uh, you have maybe a couple of different groups and say group one, uh, the first three subjects all score two, and then the next three subjects score uh, four. And if you do a mean, what an average is, is you take all the numbers, you add them up, and then you divide by how many numbers went into it. So in this case, your mean will be three. But the point of the video is, while three is representing this group of a bunch of twos and fours, no one in the group even scored a three. So when we talk about average, we're talking about an explicit fiction, which could be useful, but it can also be very deceiving. So imagine if Elon Musk moved into your neighborhood and then everyone started talking about how the average salary in your neighborhood is, you know, a million dollars every five seconds or whatever it would be. And so <clears throat> you can see how misleading. And of course, there's the old, uh, I think this is the title of a book, there are lies, there are damn lies, and then there are statistics. And really behind that, we could say there are lies, and then there are modes of thinking. And that's what really uh, gets us down a potentially bad path if we don't see the difference between when these are useful and when they are not. And in the book, so really everything I'm talking about comes from a chapter in the workbook, The Illusion of Averages. And uh, in it, we talk about a really interesting story about aviation and how <clears throat> at the end of the Second War, they were having, you know, maybe 17 air crashes a day. And none of these were due to combat. They were due to pilot error. And so they were confronted with this huge problem because when they had constructed the cockpit, what they had done is they had come up with an average. It kind of makes sense, at least to the mind. And then they thought, well, let's see who these pilots are. And it turned out when they measured every pilot, none of them were average. So by constructing the average pilot seat, you were constructing it for no one. And that's the thing about averages. It's really the thing about all the thoughts that we have. Uh, and in fact, that's the way so many thoughts are, are that work. They're actually averages. In fact, there's even a, a theory, and there's some really good evidence for this, that what we consider physical beauty is actually an average. So the mind takes the average distance between the eyes, the average distance between the nose and the mouth and all this, and it constructs an average. And you can show this, I used to do this in class, where it would take everyone's face and then there's programs that will morph. And when you morph it, you're just creating an average. And it turns out the more faces you plug into the program, the more attractive it becomes. And so these averages, even though they're illusions, like I say in so many videos, just because something is an illusion doesn't mean it can't have real effects because things believed to be true are true in their consequences. And so this illusion of average, it's tied in with the self because so many things about the self simply doesn't want to be average. It wants to be just a little bit better than average. So imagine I came back with some test results. I said, look, you know, your IQ is slightly below normal. How does that make you feel? How does it make your ego feel? Or I said, you're a little shorter than average. You're a little taller than average. You're a little smarter than average. Your income is a little bit higher than average. And you can notice every time I make that comparison, your emotions centered around the self either go up a little bit or they go down a little bit. And the whole point is that these averages are playing a huge role in your life, but they're not even true. They are like so many things I talk about. They're useful tools, limited useful tools. But when we take them seriously, like if someone said that your IQ is below normal, that's just a test that some psychologist constructed. <laughs> and I mean, we don't, we, in fact, one psychologist was backed into a corner and, they, and 
they, they kept asking him, what is intelligence? We want to know what this idea that you have is that your test measures. And in the end, all he could say is that intelligence is what my test measures. <laughs> now, there was no way to independently talk about what intelligence meant outside of the test itself. So if I said your IQ is above or below average, it was meaningless on multiple dimensions. And yet the self gravitates towards this as a, as a, as a comparison point. So uh, it could feel a little bit good. And then if it's not so, um, and, well, we could do this with depression. If I say you're, you're not as depressed as the average person, then you could turn that into something positive. So um, play with this through the rest of the day. See how many averages you're confronted with. You'll be surprised how averages have masqueraded themselves as a part of reality when, again, they're just another illusory thought pretending to be something it isn't.